Hi, at an Oregon cottage, I've enjoyed collecting amateur original artwork over the years. I find them at garage sales and thrift stores, and I like to use them throughout the house for decorating. I've also done a little collecting of my own. In a minute, we're going to take a look at the Oregon Cottage private collection. A good seascape painting makes you feel like you're experiencing the ocean in some way. Like you're taking a seashell and holding it up to your ear. But the paintings in the Oregon Cottage Collection take you one step further. It's like you've taken the same seashell and are holding it up to your eye. Our first piece was painted in oil on canvas and it's rather fitting because it's a rather oily feeling ocean scene. On the beach here we have what are presumably the tops of piers that look like old 50 gallon oil drums. The ocean itself is the color of SAE 30 motor oil. The sun is going down in the ocean. You can see it here. We can just see part of the sun underwater. It's a reference to the myths of ancient native peoples who believe that when the sun set it was enveloped in the ocean. The story of Spider-Man 3 also had a similar ending. This painting depicts a typical scene on the Oregon coast. You have the fir trees along the cliff overlooking the surf pounding against the rocks. That The feeling is very majestic. It's like the roar and the pounding. It's like Tchaikovsky. It's like Beethoven. And perhaps this is why the painter of this piece has drawn the lid of a grand piano. In this piece, the sea is in an entirely different mood. You see a sullen sky. You see an angry sea. And yet, your reaction is one of being hungry. Because the way the artist has depicted these waves, it's like they're dollops of frosting that have been applied to the cliffs and smoothed out in kind of a cake decorating motif. What a quiet scene. What uh, a peaceful scene. But I think when you take a closer look, it's going to freak you out. Here we've got a placid, pleasant sky. We have seagulls flying and playing along the old pilings. Over here, the line of the water, which is holding up the boat, stops at this little outcropping of land where it's moored. Now look here. The land falls away, the water falls away to perhaps four or five feet lower, and now here's the rest of the ocean. So basically what we have is a standing wave, like a little permanent hill of water. This is the strange kind of thing that causes mariners to put dead seagulls around their necks and go insane. This watercolor is of a scene somewhere near Nova Scotia, typical of a fishing village. You see the, the boat in the foreground resting in the water. But I want you to take a close look at the boat in the background. It's hovering several feet off the ground. It reminds me of the land speeder that Luke Skywalker drove uh, on his planet of Tatooine. Could the painter have been saying, what if Star Wars had been set in our world? What if Luke Skywalker was from a fishing village in Nova Scotia? This is perhaps the most important and the most provocative piece in our collection. It's a depiction of a ship under full sail. These appear to be the tops of the masts. But then are these also the tops of the masts? This appears to be the bow of the ship, the front. But what about this? Is this also the bow of the ship? The sea is very calm out here, and yet at the same time it's rushing over the dock or the pier here. 
The wind is clearly coming from this direction and filling the sails this way, yet the wind is also coming from this direction and filling the sails back this way. And finally we see with a great amount of animation the foaming of the ocean at the bow of the ship as it speeds along and yet it's still tied to the dock. Wow, there's a lot more to those paintings than I ever realized. Great art provokes you to ask a lot of questions. Okay, I have a question. What's with the bow tie and vest? <laughs>